Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. Many people call being psychic a gift, but tell that to the people who are tormented by evil spirits throughout their lives due to having these gifts. I'm pretty sure they'd prefer to have the ability to live their lives in peace without being hunted down like prey by spirits. That's the story I'll be presenting tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new content. And if you like tonight's video, appease the gods of YouTube and give it a thumbs up, share the link, and comment below. But hey, even if you don't like it, give it a thumbs down, say something mean in the comments section below, and don't share the link. It's 2020, going on 2021. We're in total anarchy. There are no rules, so live it up. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's get scared together, together. I've had many supernatural encounters throughout my life, and I believe it's due to the fact that both sides of my family have psychic gifts. But I've had two experiences that I would call life-altering, and they led to my exorcism. The first experience was way back in my childhood. I was about six or seven years old. Things just started happening one day, out of the blue. I began having very vivid dreams, and in them, there was always this shadow figure, a malevolent one that seemed masculine because of the voice and demeanor. This shadow figure was always chasing me in my dreams. Then one night, I remember an extremely frightening encounter with this thing. In my dream, it cornered me in my bedroom and threw me on my bed and held me down. I was paralyzed, vibrating with fear throughout my whole body. Then it whispered in my ear, as you grow, the more powerful you become, and one day I'll be coming for you. Then I woke up, screaming so loudly and so intensely that I swear the entire bed shook. My room was freezing cold, and my parents had to break through the door to get in. The door was locked, which it never was before, and I hadn't locked it. My parents were frantic, asking what happened. I explained it to them, and I remember my mother having a very strange look on her face. Yes, it was a look of worry, but also something else. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it really scared me. Even more frightening, there were bruises on both of my arms where the shadow figure had held me down on my bed. So, was it a dream or not? My mother sat me down the next morning and explained to me that when she was a very young girl in Vietnam, she would see spirits everywhere. And it was tough because a lot of these spirits looked like normal, living, breathing people to her. So she would interact with them thinking they were people. Others in her village would give her very weird looks because they couldn't see what she saw. So to them, it looked like she was speaking to thin air so people would talk about her and our family, gossiping. She inherited the gift from my grandmother, who could also see spirits. She told me that one day while walking home from school, she felt a very dark, cold energy around her, and it made her faint. While she was passed out, an entity appeared, and it tried to possess her. But thankfully, she was wearing a spiritual amulet given to her by a priest who was a family friend and that protected her. When my mother left Vietnam and came to the U.S., she married my father. She told me that on my father's side, there are quite a few aunts and uncles who have the gift, but one aunt in particular has it quite strong. She told me this aunt might know what was happening to me and could possibly help. So she contacted her and she arrived at the house later that day. We talked for quite a while and my aunt decided to do some sort of ritual to see what was happening with me and in the house. She had me lie on the floor in my bedroom, surrounded by candles, incense, and a strange-looking circle with symbols drawn with herbs. She began chanting something in Vietnamese, and suddenly the room got very cold and I got lightheaded and blacked out. 
When I came to, I saw my mother and aunt in the hallway, whispering to one another. Then my aunt came back into the room to talk to me. She asked me if I had seen or spoken to anyone that my parents hadn't met, especially recently. I told her that yes, I had befriended a little girl who walked behind the house through the alleyway every day. I had been talking to her every day for almost two months. The little girl would wander back and forth through the alleyway, but she never told me anything about herself, where she came from, what her parents did for a living, where she lived, etc. But she was very friendly, and we talked about all sorts of things, and it was really nice to have someone to talk to. But when my aunt asked me her name, it was the strangest thing. I couldn't remember it. I know she had told it to me many times, but for some reason I just couldn't remember it or say it out loud. My aunt decided to take me to the backyard by the alleyway so she could hide inside a shed and spy on this little girl. I walked up to the fence and I called out for the girl, and sure enough, she appeared. We talked for a little while and then she left. After she left, I walked to the shed and my aunt had a terrified expression on her face. She grabbed me and brought me inside the house and talked to my mother and me, and she told me what she saw. It turns out, what appeared to be a little girl to me, to my aunt, it appeared as a huge black shadow figure. She said it was radiating so much negative energy, she had never encountered anything like it before. She explained it to me like this. Since both sides of my family have the gift, and I was the firstborn combination of both family lines, I have some very strong gifts of my own. And because of that, I am inadvertently drawing the supernatural to me, and not always the good kind. Basically, I was a magnet for energy, and everything supernatural was being attracted to me. My aunt told me that I would need to be very careful and aware that spirits would always be with me and many would be malicious. She said whatever evil entity was interacting with me was trying to force a piece of itself into me to nurture and grow it until it was time to harvest. I was beyond freaked out and crying. It was all too much to take in. I was only a child. My aunt then talked to my mother, and she said there was a ritual that could help ward off the entity that was trying to mess with me. My aunt left, then returned the next day with boxes filled with supplies for this ritual. Once again, I was on my bedroom floor, lying amongst candles, incense, and the weird symbols drawn with herbs all over the place, and my aunt was chanting in Vietnamese. I remember this unbelievable pain in my lower back. It was searing heat, like fire being directly applied to my skin. My aunt then dipped her hands in a bowl filled with oils and herbs and placed her hands on my back. I could feel her tracing things all over my back, and it went on for what seemed like half an hour. Then it stopped, and the pain was gone, and I passed out. I woke up hours later. My aunt explained to me that she had placed a rather serious protection spell on both my body and soul, as it was the only way to make sure that this evil entity couldn't get to me anymore. I believe it worked. I never saw the shadow figure or the little girl masquerading as it ever again. Years later, I came to find out why the protection spell was so serious. My aunt told me it required her to extract some of her own soul to power it. The other thing was that it would dampen my own psychic abilities to try to give me a more normal life, one that wasn't dictated by the paranormal. The second life-altering experience I had took place in my sophomore year of high school. It was sometime in the fall when it began happening. I began noticing things and people out of the corner of my eye. These things I saw had the ability to pass right through living people and objects. Nothing supernatural had happened to me for a few years since my aunt had placed that protection spell on me, so seeing these things really shook me up. 
I tried to brush it off because my aunt had told me that the less attention I give spirits, the less likely they would be to try to engage with me. But one lovely sunny afternoon during lunch, I was with friends at the park near school. We were at the playground and I was lying down on the merry-go-round alone. When suddenly, I felt a pressure on my ankles and shoulders. I was being held down by an invisible force. All on its own, the merry-go-round started spinning around, and I remember looking over to my friends on the swings and trying to yell out to them, but I couldn't scream. I opened my mouth, but nothing would come out, no sound at all. It was like my voice had been taken from me and I had that same familiar feeling of coldness in the air and the suffocating dark energy, so I knew something evil was messing with me again. My friends finally noticed me on the merry-go-round. They saw that no one was pushing it, yet it was spinning faster and faster, far too fast. They ran over to try to help, but I was pinned down on this thing, and they couldn't get close enough to stop it. But suddenly, it just stopped short, and I was thrown off of the thing. My friends were all stunned. I couldn't explain to them what had just happened, but I could see on their faces that they were very frightened. We never did talk about it. I just got up and ran home and told my mom what had happened, and she told me she would consult with my aunt right away. That night, as I slept, I dreamed I was in school with my friends. Then, we were back in the park, just hanging out and having fun. But suddenly, everything got very dark, and it was nighttime. My friends all kept on like nothing had changed. But I felt a presence around me. And then, it happened. The shadow figure appeared, and it threatened to hurt my friends if I didn't do everything it commanded of me. In the dream, it then moved towards my friends, and I jumped in front of it to try to keep it from hurting them. Then it grabbed me and tossed me around, and I was screaming. Then I woke up, and I had bloody cuts and bruises all over my body. My mom came rushing into my bedroom and saw what happened, and she called my aunt immediately. She arrived less than an hour later and saw the state I was in, and she was utterly speechless. She had brought all the items for the ritual, so she did a check on me and assured me that the protection spell was still in place and it was still in effect, so she could not explain what just transpired. She checked the house and everything, and there was no trace of evil energy or spirits. She was perplexed and decided to have me come stay at her house for the night as it was very heavily warded against all manner of spirits and entities. As soon as we arrived at my aunt's house and I walked through the door, I instantly felt safe and warm. It was like I was able to take a full breath again and my body was at ease. She said she was gonna contact some friends and family members about my latest experience to see if they could help. She had me sleep in the bedroom next to her that night and nothing happened, no bad dreams, nothing. The next day, as I was getting ready for school, I was hesitant to leave the house. But thinking back on the dream and the threat that that shadow made against my friends, I forced myself to go, for their sake. I got to school and saw my friends, but we really didn't talk much. They wouldn't even look me in the eye. They were still in shock from the weird playground experience, and they were really uncomfortable around me. Later, when we were in the cafeteria for lunch, I heard the voice of the shadow figure. It was right behind me, talking into my ear. It told me it was going to hurt one of my friends that very moment unless I chose someone else to suffer in their place. Then one of my friends started choking out of nowhere, and the voice said, Choose another, or else your friend will die. I was panicking, full on freaking out, and the voice kept repeating over and over. Choose another, or your friend will die. Choose another, or your friend will die. In a panic, I just pointed to a random person in the cafeteria, and suddenly, my friend stopped choking. But the boy I randomly pointed to, his nose began to bleed, and I mean, it was bleeding a lot. 
and he collapsed to the ground. Everyone began to scream, and it was chaos. The nurse was called to tend to the boy, but I didn't know what to do or say, so I just ran off. I called my aunt and had her pick me up from school, and when we arrived at her house, two of my other aunts and an uncle were waiting in the living room, along with about a dozen other people that I didn't know. But my aunt told me that I could trust all of them. They all spoke with me, and then they brought me up to the attic, where they had things set up for another ritual. My aunt told me they were going to try to cleanse the evil entity from me, effectively snuffing it out. As the cleansing was underway, I was surrounded by all of these people chanting in various languages, and these strange smells and sounds were around me. I grew weak and collapsed to the ground. This part is hard to fully explain, but at some point, I started going in and out of consciousness. I was having these flashes of me in the room with everyone, and then screaming, things being thrown around, loud chanting, then flashes where I was standing in the corner of the attic with blood all over my hands, and my aunt's friend lying on the floor nearby. She had a gash on her lower calf, and it was bleeding a lot. She just looked up at me and said that it wasn't my fault, and I just started crying uncontrollably. My aunt rushed over and was holding me in her arms. She told me that the evil entity couldn't fully possess me because of the protection spell, but that it could and did manipulate me externally. So during the moments that I was in and out of consciousness, she told me that the shadow figure manifested and it kind of had pieces of itself attached to my limbs, forcing me to thrash around violently and harm her friend. The friend was taken to the hospital and the rest of the people at the cleansing moved into the living room. My aunt comforted me for a bit before helping me down to the living room as well. My uncle said that he knew a priest at a temple nearby who specialized in exorcisms so we all headed for the temple that evening. When we arrived at the Buddhist temple, a very old man greeted us. He came up to me, and the thing I remember the most were his eyes. I had never seen such kind eyes before. I knew right away I was in good hands. He led us to a building in the temple compound that had been prepared for the exorcism. He covered me in yellow wraps with red markings and symbols all over them. The old man turned out to be the priest that my uncle had mentioned earlier. They all formed a circle around me and began to chant, and I felt a heaviness in the air as they chanted. I once again blacked out, and I remember having a dream or vision of being in a cemetery. In the vision, I was walking around the cemetery, and then the shadow figure appeared but it turned into me. There I was, staring at this thing that now looked exactly like me. And it was angry with me. It kept saying that it was all my fault. It lunged towards me and we began to brawl, but I was able to kick him off me. And then the yellow wrappings with the red markings in the symbol appeared out of nowhere and he became encased in them. It was like a mummification. And then, he vanished. When I awoke, the priest was exhausted. Yet, he allowed the others to rest while he sat with me and told me what he had discovered. He told me about my twin brother. Well, this was a shock because it was the first time I had ever heard that I had a twin brother. So I was very confused. Apparently, I was a twin in my mother's womb. My twin brother was weak and during the birthing process, I was strong and healthy, so I survived, but my twin didn't. The doctors had taken the body away after my mother saw him, and she said she was never told where he was taken to. The priest said that although my brother was never born, he was very well aware of his death, and this created a void within his soul because he was so angry that he didn't get to be born. Over time, his anger was coupled with jealousy and resentment of me, and it consumed his soul, distorting it into something grotesque and violent. 
so he latched onto me like a leech, and he tried to replace my soul within my body with whatever he had become, so that through me, he could live the life that he believed was stolen from him by me. Now I know what you're thinking. This sounds like some bad horror movie that was made up, but I swear this all happened. The priest went on to explain to me that he managed to exercise my twin and that he was able to force him into the afterlife to be reborn, as he still had some semblance of a soul left. After the ordeal was done, I was brought home the following day. I asked my mother about my twin brother. She started crying and apologizing for not telling me before. She then told me that the doctors did tell her where the body was eventually, so she took me to the cemetery that I had seen in my dreams, and there it was, the tombstone of my twin brother. But there was no name on it, because he never got one. The moment I got close to the grave, I felt a strange vibration in my chest, and then it was gone. We said our goodbyes, and I wished him peace in the next life, and then we left. I've never heard from him again. Talk about your sibling rivalry. Most of us only have to deal with a sibling trying to take our toys or clothes, not our very souls and lives. Let me know in the comments section the worst thing your sibling, alive or dead, ever did to you. Or you to them. I don't care. It's almost 2021, remember? The rules don't apply. Put anything you want in the comments section. Have at it. Go crazy. If you'd like to hear more stories like this, click on the video on the screen above. I'd like to thank all of you for listening tonight. It's such fun gathering with you here every week, anarchy or not. So, until next time, stay scared, my friends, and I'll catch you in the comments section.